This is part of the Infinity Analyze video tutorial series. In this tutorial, we take a look at the multispectral capture capability for a monochrome camera. Multispectral capture has been newly added in release 6.5 of the Infinity software. We'll take a look at the capture wizard, uh, exposure control, channel settings, and saving the result. Starting with the live video preview on the screen, I have my uh, shutter open. I've got an exposure time of about 50 milliseconds, which is sufficient for the illumination and, and this particular sample that uh, if I use a gain of 10, I can get a fairly fast screen refresh and I'm able to focus on my sample. Again, using a monochrome camera, I have a single channel displayed. So now I'm gonna close the shutter I don't need my live preview. I'm going to take a look at the multispectral capture either by invoking it from the toolbar icon or from the camera capture menu. If you find that the multispectral capture is not enabled when you come to this uh, menu drop down or in your toolbar icons, uh, that simply means that you haven't configured your multispectral settings. So multispectral settings is the place to begin where you define your fluorophores or your dye samples to match with your filter cubes and you can create a configuration list for the settings that you're going to use for capture. Once you have a settings dialog uh, populated, then the multispectral capture becomes available. I invoke the multispectral capture wizard by clicking on that option. Immediately you get the dialog appear. Your live video preview is disabled while the wizard is active. So you won't see any updates there. Across the bottom is a collection of thumbnails that match the channels that are defined in your multispectral settings. This area will display a live preview or uh, captured images as we progress through the wizard. Up here you can control the exposure and the gain for your live preview display and capture functions. To edit the exposure or the gain values, my personal preference is to highlight the text and type in a new value. And uh, that way you can make course changes very quickly. So for example, if your image on screen seems to be about half the brightness that you want, you can quite easily double your exposure um, or half your exposure if it's too bright, etc. You can also make smaller incremental changes with the scrolling arrows for both exposure and gain, or you can use the exposure slider. The capture button will enable you to capture each channel and we'll go through those options uh, as we proceed. We'll talk about the histogram functionality and the display color as well as zoom and alignment as we move along but I just wanted to quickly get into the sequence of capturing the channels um, which this wizard makes very easy. So my first channel is my DAPI channel that matches the filter cubes on my microscope and it's highlighted as the first channel so I can open the shutter on my microscope and immediately get a live preview. That live preview seems a little dark for me I'm going to change to an exposure of 400 milliseconds. Uh, that's brightened up my my image. And I'll click capture at 800 milliseconds. And I've got a result that I'm relatively happy with at this point. If I want to return to the live preview, I have to click this green triangle. Whenever you see the green triangle displayed, it means you're looking at a static image. And to go back to live preview, you need to click that green triangle. You are free, however, to change your exposure and your gain and simply re-click the capture button to take another image. So my shutter is closed for my DAPI channel. I'm rotating my filter wheel, clicking either on the next channel thumbnail or using the next button to move to the next channel. I can open my shutter. My image looks good. In the live preview, I click capture. When my thumbnail appears, my image is captured. I close the shutter on my microscope, move to the next filter wheel position, click on the Alexa Green thumbnail, open the shutter on my microscope, get my preview image, click
click capture because I don't feel I need to make exposure adjustments at this point and then close my shutter. That effectively completes the acquisition portion. I've collected three separate channels using my monochrome camera with uh, the filter cubes on my microscope and for each channel that was active the multispectral settings was looking at my display color choice which was defined on my multispectral settings dialog. If I want to make post capture alterations to the way these colors are displayed I can select uh, a different lookup table to highlight the colors that that image uh, was collected simply by choosing them from that list. I can use the emissions color approximation or I can return to um, a different color or my original color simply by clicking on this uh, return dialog button here. The same thing applies for each of my other color channels. So once I've collected my images, I can use either the next button to go from my last channel to the composite, or I can click on the composite thumbnail. When the composite window is displayed, I lose my uh, other dialog options because I have no exposure and gain control or histogram control over the composite, but I can produce the composite simply by clicking on this composite button. If I'm satisfied with the results, I can simply go to Save Images and use some of these options on the right to control how those images are saved. If I enable 16-bit mode, then I'm limited to saving my images in TIFF file format because that's the only format that supports 16-bit. With this option unchecked, I get 8-bit images. And that's for my composite as well as for the channels. If I don't want to save the individual channels but only want to capture my composite to disk, then I can enable that option. And if I want my multispectral capture sequence to repeat each time I save images and start over again from the beginning, then I enable this checkbox. If you want to do it a one of process and then have the dialog closed and not reopen, then you uncheck this option. So a quick look at the save images dialog. It's what you'd expect. I can put in uh, the name that I want into the dialog here and I can save my image in the SIF file format which preserves the calibration data with that image. So I've performed a multi-spectral capture, saved the composite, and I can now click finish and start the process over again. If I'm a little dissatisfied with my composite results or I'd like to tweak it, uh, there's no need to go back to my slides necessarily at this point, but I can go to the individual channels. And this, this is where I want to talk about some of the options that are available. So effectively, you've captured and saved your composite, but this shows you some of the editing capabilities that you have available to you. You can hide an individual channel from the composite. So by clicking the hide button, I get a horizontal line through my blue channel. If I revisit the composite, it will recalculate the composite with only using the channels that are not hidden, in this case, the red and the green channels. Returning to the DAPI or the blue channel, I can add it back into the composite. I can hide the display color. So I'm looking at my image data with the blue lookup table enabled, but I can um, look at it as a monochrome data by unchecking or checking the hide display color. I have two options here that enable me to adjust my black level or adjust my white level. So when enabled, my histogram gets uh, vertical lines at the bottom and top edges of the histogram, and the histogram is displaying uh, pixel count distribution on a relative scale of uh, black to white along the bottom here. So if I'm getting a little bit too much autofluorescence, if my uh, sample's um, a bit old, if I'm using oil and the oil is autofluorescing, I want to clip some of the data, I can move this vertical bar from the bottom end upwards and pick a point in my histogram where I'd like to clip that data and let go of the mouse and all data in my histogram below that is being clipped to zero and you can see I've lost a lot of that autofluorescence. Uh, my image has become slightly dimmer as a result but I'm not using the full dynamic range of my camera here so if I move 
my white level adjustment from the bottom or sorry from the top of the histogram in towards where the data is I'm effectively stretching out the data making this my new saturation point. So if I return to my composite image now it's going to be recalculated with the a better looking black background because I clipped some of that blue channel that was autofluorescing and I've enhanced the nuclei a little bit. You can do similar things by looking at your red and your green channels. Uh, the level of aggressiveness that you apply in that black level clipping is up to you. The amount of stretch that you apply uh, also up to you. So I go to each of these channels in this case, apply a little bit of the clipping and go back to my composite and see the changed result. I can save the new result under a different name or overwrite the previous name. Again, saving all channels, saving a 16-bit data as desired. I have a zoom function to be able to zoom in and zoom out, or I can type in a numerical value in this field for faster zoom, and then that becomes part of the drop-down list for zooming. And when I'm looking at an individual channel, if I notice in my composite that they're not aligned correctly, I do have X and Y pixel shifting adjustments. I can put negative or positive pixel values in here to um, indicate an amount of shift in the horizontal and vertical directions to align channels that uh, did not align properly for various reasons. One other item I'd like to uh, mention here is the open file. So if I saved my composite image along with the channels and at a later date I want to come back and I decide I need to tweak those channels, I can load the individual channels into each um, of the uh, wizard capture capabilities and control their display color. I could even load them up into different channels if I'd made an error um, and apply them to to create a new composite. So you can open a file and open file di dialog looks just like the save file dialog. With working with a monochrome camera the input channel is essentially disregarded uh, because the monochrome camera is going to uh, see all the colors on all pixels. And that summarizes the use of the multispectral capture wizard with a monochrome camera.